Multivariable calculus, we're in 15.3. We're evaluating double integrals over regions that are bounded by curves rather than just rectangular regions. And uh, you can see I've already graphed this out. Y equals 2x squared, that's a parabola with a vertex at the origin that's down below. Uh, and uh, then up above 1 plus x squared, that's uh, going to be a parabola lifted up so that its vertex is at y equals 1 and uh, or 0 comma 1. And uh, you can quickly solve. You can set these uh, y's equal 2x squared equals 1 plus x squared. If you solve that, uh, you'd get x equals plus or minus 1. Uh, so here's our region. This is a type 1 region. Uh, and uh, how do you know? Well, uh, you can see that you can draw vertical segments always with the same boundaries uh, with those two parabolas. And all such vertical lines are going to go from x equals negative 1 to x equals positive 1. So I'm going to get started here and write that out. Uh, we can have our integrand, which is x plus 2y. But a region 1 starts with dy, closest to the integrand. And these y boundaries, the low parabola is 2x squared, y equals 2x squared. The upper one is 1 plus x squared. And uh, you can see we're going to have all such vertical lines from negative 1 to 1. There's your dx. Guys, you get up to here, and then really it's just an exercise in calculus and simplifying. Using the fundamental theorem, we, of course, first take our antiderivative with respect to y. And when we do that, I'm just going to recopy my x bounds out here. Uh, this x, antiderivative with respect to y, is xy. Antiderivative of 2y, well, bump it up to a 2, divide by 2, you'd get y squared. And uh, then we'll have 1 plus x squared for the upper bound. 2x squared for the lower bound. And uh, then we just have to perform that fundamental theorem. So again, I'm just recopying that uh, outer integral from negative 1 to uh, 1. I'm going to uh, take my antiderivative uh, right uh, now. Well, I'm going to finish the fundamental theorem. Pardon me. I'm plugging in this upper bound. Already had taken the antiderivative, so sorry to say that. But we plug in our upper bound for y here. And then we're going to say subtract plugging in your lower bound for y. Just as we finish that up, that's a 2x squared plus, well, 2x squared squared. I think we see where we're going with that in just a moment. So if I were to just clean this up, tell you why I'm going to actually continue over here just for the sake of space. You know, as we clean this up, as we distribute, you can see that we'd have an x plus x cubed. Uh, squaring all this, well, you know, we'd have 1 plus 2x squared plus x to the fourth. Uh, inside here, this is a 2x to the third plus 4x to the fourth. And you know, as I distribute that negative, of course, I'm going to have that, right? So at this point, you're really at a calc BC, calc AB problem, right? We just have to combine our like terms. We'll have this is x, you know, with x squared. Well, sure looks like uh, we're going to have uh, also a 1 out in front. You know, I, I should have looked for that first. But I see a 1, I see an x, I've got a, a 2x squared right here, just trying to combine my like terms. I've got a plus x cubed and a minus 2x cubed, that's going to be a minus x cubed. Um, let's see here, I've got uh, an x to the 4th and a negative 4x to the 4th, that's a minus 3x to the 4th. Um, so, hey, here we are. Uh, you know, thankfully, really within our final stages, we still have to take an antiderivative, of course, now, but you could have had a problem like this in uh, BC Calc last year. Now I'll just take antiderivatives. We'll get x 
plus x squared all over a 2 plus 2 thirds x to the third minus x to the fourth all over 4 minus 3x to the fifth all over 5. And then we just have to finish with the fundamental theorem. And guys, from here, if you were to plug in a 1, you'd get a 1 plus 1 half plus 2 thirds uh, minus 1 fourth minus 3 fifths. And then we could say minus, hey, plugging in a negative 1, you'd get negative 1. Squaring something, you just get a, a one half, and then we could say minus a two thirds, uh, you know, because that negative one is going to uh, come out in front. Negative one to the fourth is just going to be a positive, that's a minus one fourth. Um, the negative to the fifth is a negative, and that's going to turn that into a positive. Please do understand, however, that you know, this is minus this whole expression, and you know, we could distribute that negative and uh, condense everything all together. For the sake of time, especially for this video, this is just number crunching. I'm going to leave it up to you to confirm that if you were to distribute that negative and if you were to get everything together, which you may use a calculator for, you'd get 32 over 15. Okay? So 32 over 15 is uh, really the net volume, so to speak, of that function of x plus 2y, z equals x plus 2y, on that region, okay? Uh, so as we look at number two, as we're looking at problem number two, just want to tell you that we've got something kind of similar. We're given a paraboloid. By the way, just a way to remember what a paraboloid looked like. It's been a long time since we talked about that. It's like a three-dimensional parabola, almost looking like a gumdrop, a 3D kind of parabola, looking something like that. That's z equals x squared plus y squared. And we want the volume of uh, that solid that lies underneath the paraboloid and above the region bound by y equals 2x and y equals x squared. Well, here we go again. We need to graph and get started really with this. y equals 2x is, of course, just this line. And then we've got a parabola that's going to uh, open upwards. And again, I just uh, encourage you to think about solving by inspection. Look, with y equals x squared, if I plugged in x equals 1, and if I plugged in x equals 1 on that line, I wouldn't get the same y values, would I? But if I plugged in x equals 2, I would. Now, could we solve it algebraically? Of course we could. Of course we could. Look at that. We've got 0, 0. You might not be too surprised to see that we're going to cross there at the origin. And so there's our region. Once again, we've got a type 1 region that we can look at. Uh, a type 1 in the sense that we could set up vertical bars, y boundaries at that, uh, that are going to be between the parabola and the line, always that being the case. The line is the upper bound, the uh, parabola is the lower bound. And uh, we're going to have vertical bars going from x equals 0 to x equals 2. So I could real quickly set up this integral. I'm going to say, look, it's a type 1 region. Inside here, I've got x squared plus y squared. We've got that paraboloid. But I'm going to have a dy dx, right? What about my y boundaries? Well, you can see your vertical bar, the bottom of it is x squared. The top of it is the line that's y equals 2x. So you can see that being the case. And we're always going to go between uh, x equals 0 to x equals 2 to represent all vertical bars that we could draw. So uh, how do we proceed? Well, much the same way that we just did earlier. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to take my antiderivative with respect to y. So I'll have x squared y plus y to the third over 3. 
And uh, using the fundamental theorem, then I'm going to say, look, I, I'll plug in an upper bound of 2x and a lower bound of x squared. And, uh, you know, this is kind of just coming along for the ride then, that integral from 0 to 2 with the dx. Uh, but let's see where we're going. When I plug in that 2x for y, right, uh, when you do that, you're going to see that, you know, once again, we still have that 0 to 2 out here. Look, plugging in 2x, 2x times x squared, well, I could immediately say I'm going to get 2x cubed, right? Plug in a 2x here, and 2 to the third is 8, so I'd have 8x cubed all over 3. But then I'm going to say minus, well, now i got to plug in my lower bound. Uh, if y becomes x squared, x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. And x squared cubed is going to be x to the sixth. So I'll have this x to the sixth all over 3. And now, guys, we are incredibly close to being able to get this all finished up. Now, of course, inside this first parenthesis, uh, 2 is really a 6 thirds if I wanted to get a common denominator. Uh, so look, if I were to just continue uh, to work this out, 6 thirds plus 8 thirds would be 14 thirds, wouldn't it? So that first parenthesis becomes 14 thirds x cubed, distributing this negative, wow, will very quickly come up to this. And guys, at this point, there's a sense of relief, at least I hope there's a sense of relief. Right now, this is 100% an old problem, uh, a basic fundamental theorem like you'd see in Calc BC. So look, bump your power up by 1, that becomes x to the 4th, divide by 4, and you'd get 14 over 12, and of course we could reduce that. Uh, this becomes x to the 5th all over a 5. Uh, this becomes x to the 7th, put a 7 down below, 7 times 3 is 21. Uh, but look at this, then I've got to do the fundamental theorem, don't I? And, uh, you know, as we work this out, well, 14 over 12, if I divide that out, I'd get, you know, 7, um, actually over 6, pardon me, dividing out a 2, right? Uh, but if I'm going to be plugging in that 2, well, 2 to the 4th is going to get you 16. 2 to the 5th is 32, so that's 32 over 5. Uh, 2 to the 7th, well, my goodness, 2 to the 7th is... Uh, going to be uh, 128, right? And uh, guys, obviously when you uh, plug in a zero into all of those, you just get a zero. So at this point, um, I'm going to speed through this a little bit using a calculator to just crunch some numbers. You should get 216 all over 35, right? Uh, you know, we don't expect you to do every little nuance of uh, arithmetic here. Uh, you know, but we've got to be careful. Obviously, there's a lot of, uh, you know, math going on here from the, the workings of the fundamental theorem and so forth. Very easy to drop a negative or to, uh, you know, misapply a power or, you know, just uh, you know, make silly arithmetic mistakes. So we just have to be careful. All right, I think there is just one final problem left, but this one, without a doubt, uh, pardon me. Uh, you know, obviously this last one, number three, is uh, the one that's going to make kids uncomfortable, especially, uh, you know, when they see the Y squared, I think. I, I think immediately kids realize, hey, this is kind of like what we did in BC when we were graphing um, like g of y functions, right? Uh, so uh, definitely instead of having a y by itself, we'd have an x by itself. So, uh, you know, this first line, y equals x minus 1, I don't think that's an issue. I don't think that bugs kids too much. They know how to graph this. But it's the y squared equals 2x. And of course, we could, you know, just as well uh, factor out a 2 and you get uh, 2 uh, times the quantity x plus 3. 
And yeah, we're going to graph this for sure. We're definitely going to see what we get. And y equals x minus 1, well, you know, we're going to have a line with a slope of, of 1. We'll get to that. I, I think if kids have a question, it's generally, without a doubt, you know, with the graph of this parabola. And guys, just to help you out, and I think this can be so helpful, uh, look, I think what a lot of times we might lose sight of is, you know, if you've forgotten how to graph something like this, go back to plotting some points. Hopefully you know this is a parabola that opens to the right. But look, I guess normally you're used to letting x equal numbers, like 0 and so forth. This is completely backwards. Let's let y equal 0. And if you let y equal 0, even if you were right back up here, you could say, well, my gosh, 0 equals 2x plus 6, subtract a 6, divide by 2, you'd get negative 3. And all of a sudden, we're in business. You know, you're able to uh, hopefully, you know, move up a little bit. Now, of course, uh, you know, if I were to let y equal 1, I think you can already see that you wouldn't get as nice of values. You could still do that. But if y equal 2, look, 2 squared is 4. That's so much easier to solve, guys. Uh, whether it's from the 2 times x plus 3 form right here. Either way, you know, look, if you'd uh, subtract a 6, uh, you'd get negative 2 equals 2x, and, you know, x would equal negative 1. And, uh, yeah, no doubt that that's really a, a helpful situation. You could say, well, wait, what if y would equal negative 2? Negative 2 squared, you get exactly the same thing. You're solving the exact same equation. So, sure enough, I think you can see... You know, without too much going on, that, yeah, your parabola is, in fact, opening, you know, uh, to the right. However, you would be correct to understand that what we're ultimately trying to do is find that region right here. By the way, this wouldn't be a, a region 1, a type 1 region, because vertical bars would not always have the same boundaries. Guess what I'm getting at is, imagine if you drew a vertical bar like right here. That's a parabola and a parabola, whereas over here, that would be a parabola and a line for your boundaries. So, uh, look, I'm going to have those go away. This is a type 2 region, you know, where you can see your right-left boundaries are always going to be, you know, on the far right, your big boundary would be the line, and the boundary to the left would be the parabola. The big question is, what kind of boundaries are we talking about? Well, tell you what, I know y is equal to x minus 1, so if I were to plug in, instead of y, if I plugged in x minus 1, we could do that real quickly. Look what I just did. I just, uh, instead of writing y squared equals 2x plus 6, I said, ooh, I know what y is for that line. y is x minus 1. And, and why am I doing that? Well, I think you can see very fast that ultimately now we have uh, a quadratic equation, one that even factors, and factors nicely. You'd have uh, x minus 5, I think x plus 1. Uh, so x would equal negative 1, and x would equal positive 5. So, guys, that's really where we're going here. We're going to say, hey, and this would be negative 1 if you even plug that x equal negative 1 into the line. That down there would be the point negative 1, comma 2. If you plugged a 5 for x into your line, you'd have the point 5, comma 4. Uh, but look, I guess what we're getting at, because this is a type 2 region, this is type 2, we're going to work this integral out. x, y is inside the integral, right? Uh, but now I'm going to switch it up. A type 2 region says first integrate with respect to x. 
And the lower bound, that left bound, is your parabola. And uh, guys, that's where you need to solve for x. So tell you what, I do know that you know if we were to take this form right here, y squared equaled uh, 2 times x plus 3, you know, I could divide by 2, most definitely, and then subtract a 3. Look at that. So that's y squared over 2 minus a 3. That's you know just one form that I could have for it. Uh, look, when you're integrating with respect to x first, you need to have x equals equations. And look right up here for this uh, y equals x minus 1. Yeah, it's y equals x minus 1, but that means x would equal y plus 1 if you're solving for x. And we need to go all these uh, vertical bars with respect to y. I called them vertical bars, forgive me. I wrote them as horizontal bars, and that's uh, we're looking for that span of horizontal bars. So sorry about that. Uh, that's why I found both points. I, I hope you can see. Uh, you know, I didn't just find the x values. What we're really needing is these are all these vertical bars from y equals negative 2 all the way up to y equals 4. Okay, so that's ultimately where we're going. And uh, once you get that, I hope the rest of this problem becomes uh, rather, uh, you know, mechanical. Uh, let's see if we can, you know, get through that. Uh, so, yeah, this is the big, big, big difference with a type 2 region. Uh, it, you need to start integrating with respect to x. That means your boundaries have to have x equals equations. The left bound is the lower bound. The right bound is the upper bound. And then on the outside integral, you want to see all these horizontal bars span from a y-coordinate of negative 2 all the way up to 4. Let's see if we could finish this up and uh, get to work here. So integrating with respect to x, well, my goodness, I'm going to get x squared. Don't forget, you got to divide by that all over 2. And no doubt, I think this can get to be a little bit ugly. Uh, we've got to be careful here. And uh, wow, I'm going to still have this boundary from negative 2 to 4 with a dx. So, yeah, where are we going with this? Now I'm going to be plugging this into, and forgive me, the outside differential here is dy. I just took my antiderivative with respect to x, right? And now I've got to finish up that fundamental theorem. I've got to plug in these boundaries into x, right? So what is that going to look like? Well, we've got from negative 2 to 4... This will become y plus 1 squared y all over 2. Now, this is where it can get to be a little scary. You know, plugging in your lower bound, uh, no doubt, I, I think uh, is the thing that's going to look rather intimidating. Uh, so, wow, uh, what can we do to start cleaning this up? By the way, if you get to this point, I've got really good news. Even so, this has become a problem like what you would have seen from last year. So, tell you what, just a couple of friendly piece of, pieces of advice. I'm seeing that there's a 2 and a 2 down here. You know what? I'm going to factor out a 1 half. You don't have to do that. Certainly don't have to do that, but I suggest it. I think it might help. When you square here, this becomes y squared plus 2y plus 1. Don't forget, then you have to distribute a y in there. And you could say, well, what will I be left with? Well, you'll have y to the third plus 2y squared plus a y, right? So that's this beginning part right here with that 1 half factored out. Likewise, what we have for the squaring of y squared over 2 minus 3. Again, I just want to be real clear that like when you square a minus b, 
you, of course, get a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So that's what I'm about to do right here. I'll get y to the 4 all over 4, right? And uh, then double ab. ab is uh, a minus 3 halves y squared. When I double it, that half goes away, doesn't it? And uh, then I'd have negative 3 squared. Well, that's a plus 9. But don't forget, you still have that y out in front there, too. So, uh, wow, where are we going with this? Well, yeah, this is kind of a, an important step. I'm going to say minus, and then when we distribute that y, we'd have y to the fifth over 4 uh, minus 3y cubed plus 9y, right? So things are getting better. They are getting better. I hope you can see we're every bit closer to just finishing up. I'm going to continue up here. Um, let's just see where we're uh, going with this. When we distribute and combine like terms, I guess I just want to tell you that when you distribute that negative in there, all those signs are going to change. So I'm going to try and quicken up the pace a little bit here. Um, I'm going to notice that y to the fifth is the biggest power in this whole expression. So when I distribute that negative, I'm going to bring it out in front. I know when I distribute a negative to that second grouping, I'll have a plus 3y cubed. And I've got a 1y cubed over here. So I'm going to turn that into a plus 4y cubed. You know, of course, we could distribute the negative and then uh, combine like terms. I only have this uh, plus 2y squared here. That's the only term with a y squared. Um, and then we can look at our y's. You know, I've got a plus 1y. This would be a minus 9y. So as I'm looking at that, that's going to be a minus 8y. And look at that. Right now, we have made a great deal of progress. Finally, the problem is beginning to look quite a bit more doable. Well, then what? Now we've got to do the fundamental theorem and uh, bump this up. You'll get a y to the 6. Let's see here. So we'll go negative y to the 6. 6 times 4 is 24. Bump this up. That's y to the 4th. Divide by 4. You just have y to the 4th. Here's a 2 thirds y to the 3rd. Bump this up to a 2 and divide. You'd have minus a 4y squared. And uh, guys, that right there is super, super important. We are getting that much closer to, to working all this out. Now we just have to crunch some numbers and as we're finishing up the fundamental theorem. Uh, obviously, when I plug in a 4, um, we're going to get 4 to the 6th all over 24. For the sake of time right now, this video is getting a little long, uh, 4 to the 6 all over 24. Uh, if you were to reduce that uh, with a calculator, you'd get negative 5, 12 all over 3. Uh, you know, 4 to the 4th, well, that's 256. 4 to the 3rd is 64, and you multiply it by 2, you get 128. Uh, 4 squared is 16, 16 times 4 is 64, right? So you'd have that. Then you're going to have to plug in a negative 2. And uh, that negative 2 plugged in here, negative 2 to the 6, uh, well, that's going to be a 64. And it's actually a negative 64 over 24. But when you divide out an 8, you'd get negative 8 thirds. And then negative 2 to the 4th, well, that would be a plus 16. Um, plug in negative 2 in here, negative 2 to the 3rd is negative 8 times 2, you'd get a negative 16 thirds. And finally, negative 2 squared is 4, 4 times 4 is a 16. So you'd have that. Guys, I'll tell you what, right now this is number crunching. It's simply some number crunching where, don't forget, you still have this 1 half out here. If you were to just work that all out, certainly on your calculator, you'd get 36. Just want to tell you, uh, that's it then. That's kind of ugly. Uh, but that's 15.3 uh, in a nutshell.